It has been a while since I've made a Microsoft Flight Simulator add-on list. So here we are again, back at it with the top 5 Microsoft Flight Simulator add-ons you need. Since it's been a while, we've got some really awesome ones in this list and one that we've seen before, but it's been highly updated and yay, it's compatible with the sim again. You don't want to miss any of these, they're all incredibly fun, all very different from each other, so be sure to stick around. If you do want to stay up to date with the latest Microsoft Flow Simulator news, reviews, add-ons and more, be sure to hit that subscribe button, it really does help me out. But anyway, without further delay, let's get right into it. So certainly an interesting development within the Microsoft Flight Simulator world would be the more and more helicopters we seem to be getting. Starting off with the H135 moving over to the 145 which is pay where we've got a wide array of different civilian and military helicopters. Well another one to add to the list is the H60. We've got two variants, the army version which is of course most notably the Black Hawk and the SH-60 which is the Seahawk, two variants and I think we've got more coming along, possibly the S-70 which is the civilian one. Well it's certainly an interesting helicopter to fly, looks very nice, it's got a wide collection of liveries, you do need an external application like most helicopter add-ons for the sim, this one is called Airlander FS, it seems to work pretty well. It does take a bit of getting used to and I still can't land helicopters in Microsoft Flight Simulator, the dynamics aren't just there completely yet. So it will take a bit of time to get used to it I'm sure, but as you can see the cockpit is really well done. Sounds aren't all there, they're a bit repetitive, seem to play on loop which can be quite annoying and start up randomly sometimes. But hey, it's very early days, this is a complete work in progress. For a helicopter in Microsoft Flight Simulator without official Sobo support, it's always going to be certainly interesting, but nonetheless impressive. Be sure you move the engine power levers on the top of the helicopter above the main cockpit window, otherwise you won't be going anywhere, but it's certainly a lot of fun to fly off aircraft carriers, which is another mod I've talked about before. Have fun with this one, it's certainly always a bit of a challenge for me using a helicopter, but this definitely deserves a place here nonetheless. Now moving over to an exciting aircraft, we've got the Airbus A330 900neo. Now we did have the Project Megapack A330 not that long ago, but they stopped supporting it, I think they gave up with that, and Project Megapack has since closed down so luckily a new team has jumped aboard and we've got a new aircraft we've got another a330 it's still very early days but nonetheless it flies now i've completed a flight from frankfurt in germany to london heathrow and i was very impressed it can either work on its own or in combination with the fly-by-wire a320 nx cockpit which moves over some of their displays and systems into the cockpit where parts have been custom made, most notably the throttle. Externally it looks pretty good and all the animations work as you'd expect. It's not all there, it's still work in progress and there's a few blips here and there and some stuff that's missing out but the developer has said, with the developer being Headwind, has said that the next phase of the project will be to redesign the main wings including with realistic wing flex along with fixing issues that people are reporting. You can get all of the mods talked about in this video in the description from flightsim.to. Now this A330 includes completely new 3D modelling and new animations as you can tell, engine and contrail effects and the engines do look pretty spectacular I have to say, alongside upgraded flight dynamics so it feels more like an A330. It is of course the newest A330 being the new engine option so it's always nice to have another wide-bodied, long-haul jetliner. What do you guys think? Leave your thoughts down below. I think it looks beautiful and you get a collection of awesome liveries as well. Now moving over to an airfield where I've got personal experience. I've been to Duxford Air Museum quite a few times. We've got this beautiful Duxford scenery and my goodness is it impressive. It featured in the start of the video with my little fly past of Junkers JU-52s. And this is just perfection. Honestly, i pay for this. It looks really good, really fun, and really good on performance. Now, Duxford Air Museum is, of course, a massive museum set across an airfield, an old World War II airfield, that was used by Spitfires and Hawker Hurricanes, I believe. And you do get quite common Battle of Britain air shows there. Of course, going back to its roots. 
It doesn't only include a RAF dedicated museum, it's also got the American Air Museum and the Land Warfare Museum, as well as airspace which contains Concorde. Sadly, you don't get to see Concorde as it's in a hangar, but you do get to see a bunch of the vintage British airliners along the apron. And I've got a few comparison shots here to show you how the scenery compares to real life. Some of the keen-eyed people among us We'll know that I went there with Aviator Dan across the summer and we had an absolute blast. I really do love Duxford. If you live anywhere in the United Kingdom or even abroad, I do recommend you go there. It's an awesome place. But anyway, Echo Golf Sierra uniform. It's a really impeccable bit of kit. And notably, you can swap between airshow mode and standard museum. If you choose airshow and put it in your community file, it means you get a load of spectators lined up along the apron as well as some fences and it really adds to the aesthetic and makes you feel not so lonely basically. It's got a variety of runways, 06 right and left, and 24 right and left, one being asphalt, one being grass, so you've got plenty of variety, and I reckon you could probably pull off an airliner here just about anyway in the A320. It's really well made, the control tower does stand out, of course it's an old World War II control tower, and it really looks the part. All of the signage is there, it really feels like the museum, identical in places. I really do recommend it. So we've had some really awesome add-ons and Duxford is a really immaculate bit of scenery. Next up, the fourth add-on in this video, which is a bit of fun and of course it's in no particular order, is this fire truck. And yes, you can use the hose. It's a lot of fun. And while it might not appeal to everyone, it's certainly pretty good actually for a car in Microsoft Flight Simulator, or truck I should say. You use the rudder pedals to steer, and you can see we've got some buttons that actually work. Now I've got to be honest, I'm not too sure what all of them do, and they have got some sort of gear system here, although it's automatic um, to a certain degree I guess. So we can go drive and it doesn't actually have any impact. Um, but yeah, certainly interesting coming up by the hurricanes over here. Now you'll notice when I move my yoke, I move the nozzle in front, the hose in front. You can see the one on the top also does move. And yes, it looks like a European airport fire truck, but there's also three other liveries, I believe, to suit more different regions. Okay, so in the time of playing around with the fire truck, I figured out that it's uh, the flaps button that lets you do spraying water, and it seems you can kind of change the flow of water as well by changing the stages of flaps. Pretty cool stuff, I have to admit. And of course, that means you can actually spray it about because of the awesome particle effects in Microsoft Flow Simulator. Yeah, I've, I've never seen anything like that before. Very, very interesting. Probably one of the, actually, if not the most realistic vehicle in Microsoft Flow Simulator that isn't actually an aircraft. All the lights working to a certain degree, and of course the fact we can actually spray water about, I think that's pretty cool. It's quite a lot of fun, and I'm sure someone will find a great use for it. I mean, just look at us cleaning these wonderful aircraft, of which I've been on actually. I've stepped on these planes, a few of them anyway, at Duxford. So that does hold a pretty special place in my heart. But again, add on number four, this fire truck, I believe it's called Oshkosh. Yeah, it's really nice. So that fire truck add-on certainly interesting, but moving on to our final add-on, we move over to Global AI Ship Traffic. Now this was broken for quite some time now, but they fixed it to make sure it's compatible with Sim Update 5. They've recompiled all models in the native Microsoft Flight Simulator format with PBR textures. Now if you don't know what this does, it basically injects real life realistic boats, ships, ferries, etc. into the sim following real world shipping routes. It's been broken for quite some time, but they fixed it in late September, so that's always very nice. Sadly the boats do not have wakes yet, but that will come along, I'm sure. They're saying to aim that they're saying that will be reintroduced in October 2021, which is now, so hopefully we'll see a big update soon. It's really fun, and I know many of you will be like, it's Microsoft Float Simulator, why do we care about boats? But trust me, it makes a big difference, it makes the whole world feel a lot more alive, and hey, it's fun to fly over them in an F-15, which is exactly what I'm doing over Shanghai. I selected Shanghai because you get quite a few cargo container ships around here, so I thought we'd see some, and guess what we do? Now, I do have to give a special mention to these developers, because they've clearly got a deep passion here. 
including speaking to the actual shipping companies, such as DFDS, which is Danish, I believe, asking for their documentation to be able to make realistic models. Hats off to that, that's really good, um, and that really does improve the experience for us all. But it's not just big cargo ships, you've got little historic boats as well and submarines, naval fleets in certain areas, and really fun. They do say by the end of October we should see variable traffic intensities, which means you'll be able to see more boats than the realistic level. But hey, with already 1,050 different types of boats, definitely hats off here, it's an awesome project. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. If you have, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. Click that little red button, it really does help me out. It keeps me going and providing Microsoft Flight Simulator news and reviews, as well as helping me out on my real life aviation journey, getting my PPL and beyond. I'd like to say a massive thank you to you all for watching, I hope you've enjoyed. But from me today, that is all. Finally, I'd like to give a big shout out to my channel members. If you'd like to become one for exclusive perks, such as the shout out I'm about to give, click that blue join button. Thank you to Fanna, Leibenberg, Hello, Owen K, Captain Matt Russell, Jesse Wiseman, Ethan Bubeck, and Simon Schmidt. You guys really do help me out. Also, I'm running a charity fundraiser raising money for SAFA, the Armed Forces Charity, and St Nicholas Hospice, a local hospice of mine. I'll be doing a charity skydive at the end of it, so keep an eye out for that, and any donations are very much appreciated. But from me today, that is all. I'll see you around. Bye-bye.